Well, hello everyone and welcome back. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video today. We're going to be looking at climate and geography and weather patterns. Uh, and it all kind of stems from, you know, our love for tropical plants and growing things where they shouldn't or um, can't uh, grow, if you will. And uh, if you're watching this video, there's a great likelihood that you are familiar with uh, zones and specifically what we call the United States Department of Agriculture Plant Hardiness Zones. And that's what I have up here on the screen, the official website um, for the USDA, which governs these zones, these arbitrary lines on a map. And, uh, and that's what we're gonna get into today and, and talk about, are they correct? Are they not correct? Are they even relevant? Do they even matter? Uh, why do we put so much stock into these things and so on and so forth? Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, just real quickly, what zones are, it's a way that the United States government has elected to define for farmers and gardeners and plant people alike uh, what type of plants can grow in their area. It's a way to help them decipher uh, what can I plant, what can't I plant. And it is all based on the average annual minimum temperature at any location. Again, that's the average annual minimum temperature. So not the coldest it ever has been, but just the all of the years um, the lowest temperature from each year, average those out, and that's how they uh, arrive at these bands, if you will, of, um, of hardiness zones, cold hardiness zones. There are other types of hardiness out there. A lot of times we, we lump them all into cold, but this is specifically as it relates to cold temperatures. So first and foremost, um, I'm going to point out some flaws with this system. Um, the first and foremost is <laughs> um, the, you, you have two different degrees or the same degree, I should say, in two different bands. So for instance, um, if you're looking at uh, 9A, uh, 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and by the way, everything I'm saying today is going to be in Fahrenheit. Um, so 20 to 25 Fahrenheit for 9A, but AB is 15 to 20. Okay, so let's say you have an average annual minimum temperature of 20 degrees. Which zone are you? Are you 8B? Are you 9A? That, that shouldn't be like that. I have no idea why anyone would say it would be a good idea to have two temperature, I'm sorry, the same temperature in two different zones. That's ridiculous. Um, make this be 19 or make this be 21, but certainly don't make them both be 20. So that's the first and foremost thing. Does that matter? No, it doesn't. But what it does is it adds to the case that these zones as set up by the USDA are not the end all be all um, barometer by which you can determine what can grow in your area and also um, quite frankly that they're incorrect. So that's the first thing. These things are arbitrary, right? These things are always changing. As you'll see here in a minute, uh, I can show you at a specific location, which I pulled from myself here in Cincinnati. You could have a 4B winter as cold as negative 20 to 25 below zero, or you could have an 8B winter as warm as 15 to 20 above zero. Um, th that's simply incredible, the difference between those two, almost 40 degrees. And again, I'll show you that here in a minute. But um, these are just so arbitrary. You could, so saying you're in XYZ zone, sure, that may be true some of the years, but many of the years, that's not going to be true. It's going to be warmer than that, or it's going to be colder than that. Uh, so simply going by that is not sufficient. Um, another thing here is that there's algorithms in play. So they didn't actually, the USDA, when they built this thing, they didn't actually just go and punch in data for each specific zip code or city or whatever have you. These are algorithms that pull and scrape all this data from databases. And there's inaccuracy in that, um, in, in, in those algorithms. So there's just not a, a close of attention to detail 
probably as there could be, as there ought to be. Um, so that certainly plays into it, the computer and the machine learning and the AI um, and the algorithms involved in that does present some problems. Another reason is, and quite frankly, this is gonna be probably the most obvious, is this data is just, uh, is just old. It is just old. Um, so this particular one, which is the most recent one, by the way, was created in 2012. It is 2022 right now. Um, that is 10 years old. Even more so worse than that is going to be when I click in through here uh, and show you, and most people don't know this, they see 2012, they think that, that the data was pulled in 2012 and that is inaccurate. Zones in this edition of the USDA plant hardiness zone map are based on 1976 to 2005 weather data. Wow. So now we're talking about data from the mid 70s until uh, 2005, which was 17 years ago. 17 years ago. Imagine how different where you live is today in the past 17 years. And in, specifically, imagine how different it is in 1976. Uh, so, for instance, Cincinnati, the coldest winter on record in the history of the city was in 1977 when the Ohio River actually froze, which is just an unheard of event. And that happened in 1977. So that is picked up in this weather report. Um, whereas we we haven't seen anything like that since then. Um, so that is an outlier. Outliers uh, are attributed to this report. Um, and those are accounted for. So um, the fact that we're looking at data from 1976 to 2005, that's just bad. That's just bad. That can't be accurate anymore. Um, just think about all that has gone on in our world since 1976 from a climate perspective, and that should tell you everything you need to know. Additionally, um, you know, there's just inaccurate inadequacies in these artificial zones. Um, you know, there's things that can't be quantified here, like microclimates, um, the amount of summer heat, the frequency and the duration of cold outbreaks. Um, and what goes along with those outbreaks is a lot of wind, a lot of precipitation. I mean, there's so many other things here that go into play besides just straight up temperature. And I actually think that they um, speak to that as well here is what, yeah, other factors, light, soil, moisture, um, duration of exposure to cold, humidity, right? So um, there's so many things that go into play simply more than cold. Yes, when we talk about tropical plants, cold is probably uh, number one in terms of uh, barriers to success, but it's certainly not the only thing. It is certainly not the only thing. So we have to consider all of these other things more so than just a, an average annual lowest temperature of something that was uh, created, you know, pulling data from 40 years ago, if you will. So um, so I'm going to show you some things here that are really, really cool. And it took me a long time to find these, um, to find these pieces of information, but it's really hard to extrapolate data from the web, uh, for climate. It's just, I, I haven't been able to find a good place to do that in a, in a scalable manner, but I recently found this website and this is an amazing website. I know nothing about it other than it's called the Prism Climate Group. Northwest Alliance for Computational Science and Engineering. And I think it's based out of Oregon State, uh, which I wanna say is up in Corvallis, Oregon maybe, um, home of the beavers. At any rate, um, this is just, this is an amazing website. And I kind of just stumbled upon it through like many, many useless clicks on Google looking for um, weather data to be able to be pulled out and extrapolated. Um, so this is an awesome website. Actually, I just see now oregonstate.edu in the, in the web address. So what you're able to do is you're able to actually click on wherever you wherever you want in the United States. And sorry for my friends up north in Canada. I did try to go up there, but it does not pull in any of your data. So I'm sorry. 
Um, but as you can see here, I just pulled Fountain Square, which is pretty much the epicenter of, of Cincinnati, Ohio at 39.1 degrees north. And you can pull in these different data elements, uh, minimum temperature, maximum temperature. Uh, and you can pull it based on these parameters. If you want to do what I've done, which is look at all of the days and find the coldest day in each of the years, you have to do it this way, daily values. And this data goes all the way back to 1981. So almost as long as the 1976 we saw in the other report, and it pulls it all the way through like the past couple of days. Um, so you can retrieve this information here. And then, so here, here it is, here it all is, and this is obviously very, very unhelpful. So what you can do is you can download this information and it pulls it out into Excel. And you do have to have a little bit of Excel knowledge to be able to understand what you're doing and what you're looking at. You do have to massage the data and manipulate the data a little bit to get it to be able to do what you need it to do. But it is, uh, it is attainable. And that's what's really awesome about this website. So uh, from there, I went ahead and pulled this data in for um, zip code 45202, which is that um, dot that I showed you right here. And there's a lot of data in here, right? So I summed it up to year, minimum temp, and what that zone is. And this is all in an attempt to show you that zones are really not that important, and they are arbitrary, and they are always changing. Um, so I found all the, the low temperatures um, from, from that time all the way up through um, this past winter. And um, so there's 42 years involved in play here. Uh, actually, let me scroll in here so you can see this a little bit better. So there's 42 years. The lowest temperature since 1981 is in 1994, and it was almost negative 21 degrees, which is insane. Had no idea it was that cold in 1994, that's a 4B winter, a 4B. Now the highest low temperature for any year was in 2012, which was 10 years ago. And that temperature of that, the coldest temperature in that winter was 16.3, which is equally as <laughs> unheard of as opposed to negative 21. And that's an 8B winter, um, an 8B winter. So between these two, there's 37.2 degree swing, which just goes to show you, you have no idea what you're in store for. You could get anything. You could absolutely get anything. You could get a very mild winter, um, or you could get an actual, absolutely brutal winter. You have no idea. And that's pretty much the case for almost everyone in the Midwestern United States, down and even into the South, out through the plains, certainly the Northeast. Um, I want to do a whole nother video on all that later, but you really have no idea what you're in store for. You can get anything. Um, so that, that, that tells you a little bit there. And then what I did here is just like, show me the averages over, okay, all 42 years and then 40, 35, 30, 25, just to see where things are trending. Um, and as we see actually over all 42 years, the average annual lowest temperature in Cincinnati was negative 0.5. Five, which is a 6B winter over 40 years. It's 0.0, .0 which again, it's like, are we 6B, 7A? What is it? Um, 35 years, 0.9, 30 years, which if you recall, is what this goes by. The USDA find, um, believes that what matters is pulling in 30 years worth of data so if we're going by that, then this should be what Cincinnati is coded as uh, on their site, which is 1.2 degrees, which is a 7A winter. Uh, and then from there, we've got 24, 18, 24, 14, 27. And these are all solid 7As. Um, so this is why, in my opinion, if we're using zones, A, let's get them correct. Uh, Cincinnati is definitely a zone 7A. Uh, let's get them correct. And then also, um, do we need to use zones? Does it matter? There's a lot of talk online. Oh, I'm zone this, I'm zone that. How could you do that and zone whatever? You should be able to do this and zone whatever. You don't know. You have no idea. It could go from negative 21 all the way up to 16. You have no idea what's going to happen. Um, 
So that's why I don't think the zones are all that important. And also they're not correct. Um, Cincinnati is definitely in zone 7A. And I want to say um, that the USDA has Cincinnati coded as uh, maybe a 6B or 6A. Yeah, a little bit of both. So this light green is 6A and this dark green is gonna be, um, I'm sorry, I said that the reverse, this dark green is 6A and the light green is 6B, okay. So that, that's a full zone incorrect. That's a full zone incorrect right there. Um, interesting, Cincinnati hasn't seen below zero degrees in 1,277 days, which was three winters back in 2019. Also on the heat side, I've done so, uh, so, uh, something similar to this on the warm side. We also haven't seen 100 degrees uh, since uh, 10 years ago, which was actually 2012. So just an overall really mild year in 2012. That was the last time we saw over 100 was 10 years ago and three years ago since below zero. Um, so below zero overall, there was 20 years, good for 48%, and above zero was 22 years, good for 52%. Here's the overall um, zone or winter by winter. So there was one 4B, two 5A, four 5B, four 6A, nine 6B, 10 7As, which was number one, almost a quarter of winters were in 7A. Um, there was eight 7Bs three eight A's, one eight B. So uh, if you break out, if you remove the A's and B's, which is a difference of five degrees, if you remove those, you got one, four, six, fives, 13 sixes, 18 sevens and four eights. Um, so zone seven comes in at 43%. So you have almost a 50% chance of being above uh, I'm sorry, if, um, you do have a 52.4% chance of being above zero um, here in Cincinnati. But I mean, that, you know, take it or leave it, it's, it's, it's very different. Everything is just so, so different. Um, and you just never know what you're going to get. So uh, here is, if you're interested to see kind of a um, chart of this same data, um, I put together a little chart here. Maybe Excel wants to work for me. Okay, and here that is. So you can see the black trend line right there, and you can see it's up and to the right. Um, and you can really see that things are starting to be, there's a couple really crazy ones in here, but things are starting to be a little bit more normal and together, especially when you look at this streak right here. Um, which I don't know what years those were, but really things were right packed in pretty close together. So that's pretty interesting to see. Um, and what it all means is, again, zones aren't that important. There's very uh, many other factors involved and sometimes more important factors involved. And if zones are important, then we need to get the zones right because today they are incorrect. And I'm willing to bet that just about anybody that's watching this um, that's in um, the USA probably is at least a half zone warmer than what the than what the map says, at least probably a half of a zone. So if that matters to you, go out and pull that data, do what I did. Um, see if anything's different maybe it is maybe it isn't but ultimately at the end of the day are you really going to plant anything different in an area that has seen negative 21 degrees um in an area that has seen 16.3 are you really going to plant anything different to say you're in zone 6a 6b 7a 7b no in my opinion i don't i don't think you will um, because there's always still that potential you never know when you're going to get a negative 21 winter um, that is that is an available option that may happen at any time. So interesting to see. Let me know what questions you guys have. Let me know um, if you want to see anything else. I encourage you to do something like this for your own zone. This is really neat. It's a great exercise uh, or for your own location, I should say. And let me know what questions you have.
Take care.